the city that cares. Chesapeake, Virginia is a diverse city with a population of around 249,000. And it's the second largest city in Virginia. Chesapeake made national headlines in 2003 when the community hosted the first trial of the alleged Beltway sniper, Lee Boyd Malvo, for shootings in 2002. Now, almost 20 years later, on November 2nd, 2022, a mass shooting occurred in a Walmart located off of Battlefield Boulevard in Chesapeake, Virginia. Police are searching for a motive after a Walmart manager opened fire inside a store located in Chesapeake, Virginia, killing six people, wounding four others. Skyler Henry has the story now from Chesapeake. As law enforcement officers investigate the mass shooting at a Walmart in Chesapeake, Virginia, family and friends are remembering the victims. She didn't deserve that. Thomas Jones says 22-year-old Tanika Johnson, who worked at the store, was a close friend. Her family says she just celebrated her 22nd birthday. She was one of the most loving people you could ever meet in your life. Police have confirmed the alleged shooter was 31-year-old Andre Bing armed with a handgun and multiple magazines. The suspect is dead from what we believe was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Witnesses say he they opened fire them. Tuesday night in an employee area. Just left out the break room, manager come in there, started capping people up in there. In a statement, Walmart described the suspect as an overnight team leader who has worked here since 2010. The CEO called the shooting devastating, offering the company's support to not only their workers, but to the Chesapeake community. 24-year-old Jalen Jones was among those wounded. His mother says he was just beginning a shift. He knew he was being shot. Um, he made it to the front of the store. And then when he made it to the front of the store, he was shot again. This is the second mass shooting in the state in recent weeks. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Chesapeake, Virginia. The shooting comes a little more than a week after a gunman killed three student athletes and wounded two other students at the University of Virginia. Overnight, Walmart tweeted a response to the attack saying we are shocked at this tragic event at our Chesapeake, Virginia store. We're praying for those impacted, the community and our associates. We're working closely with law enforcement and we are focused on supporting our associates. Andre Bing was a 31 year old manager for the overnight shift at Walmart off of Battlefield Boulevard. Andre started working for Walmart in 2010. Some of the employees that worked with Andre said that he was a strict and nitpicky type of manager that would write people up for no reason. A lot of people said he was the manager to avoid because he would get disgruntled easily and want to, you know, pursue write-ups for his uh, subordinates. It was also said that Andre was a little bit weird. Like he kept to himself. He would keep tape over the camera portion on his phone because he felt like the government was watching him. Andre also had no social media accounts. He really wasn't into being recorded. And in this next clip, we're going to show an employee that tried to record him in his reaction. We were driving in the back. We was driving in the back and I was parking it and everything. Matter of fact, they, um, it's more fun than driving a car to me. <laughs> Facebook Live. And this, that's Andre. <laughs> This is from the Comfortable Housewife blog on Facebook. Walmart manager who shot six people in break room is identified as hostile and nasty team leader whose staff avoided working with. Gunman 31 was so paranoid about government, he taped the camera on his phone and had no social media. The Walmart gunman who opened fire in the break room of the Chesapeake store where he worked last night killing six people before committing suicide always had a problem with staff and had worked at the store for 12 years. The gunman was identified today as Andre Bing, a 31-year-old team leader who opened fire in the break room of Walmart in Sam's Circuit, Chesapeake at 12 p.m. last night. 
where 14 employees had gathered for a pre-shift meeting. Former colleagues today described him as weird and revealed he was so paranoid about being watched by the government that he taped over the camera on his phone. By 10, 16 p.m. when the first cops entered the store, Bing had killed himself and two others. A third victim was dead at the front of the store near the entrance. Three others who were taken to the hospital died of their injuries. Four others remain in the hospital today. Among those killed is 22-year-old Tanika Johnson, who was named by her family on Wednesday. The four people who were injured include 24-year-old Jalon Jones, who is in the hospital today recovering. Andre had no social media accounts, and the police are yet to release a photo of them. Wow. Well, right now, this community is wrapping their hands around everybody they could. Just for the past few hours that we've seen here, we've seen a lot of people just really trickle into this Walmart, some with signs saying, if you need a prayer, if you need a hug, I'm right here. Others just gathering, simply giving people an embrace. But in terms of the people who are actually directly affected of this, we do have a little bit of new information. Now, one of the family members of one of the individuals who were in fact hurt they came here about a couple of hours ago and they told me that their their family member, their brother, their uncle was in that hospital in stable condition, however, still severely injured with a long way to go. As far as the seven people who were killed, uh, Walmart and law enforcement telling us that three of those individuals, including the shooter, were found dead inside that break room where this entire ordeal began. Another victim was found near the entrance of the store and three, the last three victims who passed away, well, they were taken to the hospital where they later died. As far as the witnesses, I've been managed to speak to several witnesses who saw this carnage. One in particular, Kevin Harper, he was an individual who's actually inside that break room moments before the shooting rang out. He told me that he just had some kind of premonition, some kind of feeling that told him to get out of that break room. And it wasn't just a few moments later, he heard those muffled gunshots ringing out from that break room. He told me that at that point, he made a beeline straight for the clothes hanger where he can hide. And I asked him, how long did he hide inside that clothes hanger? He told me he had no idea because time felt it stopped. But after a while, he managed to get out of there, run out of the store, and he told me that on his way out of the store, he did in fact see some bodies, some covered completely in blood. Again, a lot of the witness who I say, they say this incident shocked them to the core, but they're not surprised given the frequency in which these shootings are happening in our country right now. No question about that, Ike, just a, a terrible day for them in particular, for our country, this shame, this stigma on our country, this gun violence. Aaron, investigators have identified uh, the shooter, 31-year-old Andre Bing. What else can you tell us about where the investigation stands at this point? They know that Andre Bing has worked for Walmart since 2010. He was an associate for the company and the supervisor of the overnight shift, which was just beginning after 10 p.m. when he burst into this break room and opened fire seemingly at random, according to eyewitnesses. Police haven't said much more about him, but Terry, workplace violence or in Colorado, hate where Chief Bergwan was in San Bernardino may have been extremism. At this point, what's the difference? There's easy access to guns, and increasingly in this country, uh, people who may be angry or who may have something going on inside them are turning to, to violence, and particularly gun violence, in order to, to cope with it. And, and that's the, the newest challenge for law enforcement in the country, Terry. It's happening over and over again. It, it does seem, Aaron, that's very astute, that, that it's, there's almost a self-medication for a broken and twisted mind to start shooting at people. And Jared, I, I just want to, according to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been at least 606 mass shootings this year. Uh, and I, I want to ask you, do you think it's gotten... What could have made Andre snap? He literally had a list of employees that he was targeting. So this wasn't an accident. This wasn't him snapping. He was snapping and unraveling over time. He had worked for Walmart for 12 years. So I'm pretty sure he worked with a lot of these people for quite some time. There were no innocent bystanders that got shot. They were all intended targets. And what's so crazy is that this gentleman had been having problems with 
a lot of employees over the years and Walmart did nothing about it. And what I'm thinking is that because, you know, I've worked in these type of environments before. A lot of times when they put you in these positions, especially as a black person, they make you a snitch. They make you a tyrant. They make you unlikable to your coworkers. And for a young man, he was only 31. He had been working there since he was what? He had to have been um, 18 when he started because he'd been there for 12 years, 18, 19, right? So he was a child when he started and he came into a man. And I believe this environment was just not good for him. See, where everybody tells you, just go get a job, go get a job. Having just any job is not it. You have to worry about your mental health. And you know what else is crazy about this story? That it takes place the day before Thanksgiving, as well as in Virginia. Virginia was supposed to be the first Thanksgiving in 1619 on U.S. soil. So it's very odd to me and eerie to me that this mass shooting happened in Virginia. This story is still developing and because the gunman committed suicide, there will be no arrest or any justice, to be honest, Um, and not too many answers. All we can do is speculate that either he felt disrespected by his coworkers, he had mental health issues, or he was just a mean an evil person. I mean, there's not too many options that we have here. I'm praying for peace for the family. It's not easy because it came right before a, a major holiday. It came right before people were preparing to be around loved ones and be thankful for everything that they have. I just want to say rest in peace to these innocent people that lost their lives over something so sudden and so... Uh, It's just horrible. Rest in peace to Lorenzo Gamble, Kelly Powell, Brian Pendleton, Tynika Johnson, and Randy Blevins.